Hi there, I'm Mark Pennell, along with pastor teacher Paul Tartarelli of Trinity Church here in Mentor, Ohio. Paul, I want to get right into it. Uh, if a Martian came here and saw <laughs> what we're doing, he might think it's a little odd uh, that we sit there in total silence and do nothing, or we're talking seemingly to ourselves. It's called prayer to us. If our God is the God of all creation, then he's also the God of the Martian. Ah. So, no, I don't think the Martian would think that's weird. He probably prays as well, if there are Martians, which I'm not, no. I don't think there are. So, in some ways, he might be looking at us and saying, why don't you guys pray more? Ooh, good point. <laughs> So prayer's been around since the beginning. We used to do it to gods, and now we do it to God. Yeah, and so. Not even the same God around the planet to, to some extent. Um, why is it why is it important? Well, I, I think I think it's important because it's it's inherent in us. It's in our DNA to know that there's something beyond us. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody prays. I mean, a lot of people pray, help me. Mm. I mean, that's the, the bulk of their prayer. Or when help does come, maybe the prayers, thank you. Mm. Um, every religion under the sun, um, at least the ones I've looked at, have some sort of prayer or meditation. So it's important because it's every, everybody does it. But it's also important because um, even though everybody so, somewhat does it, I, I don't know many people that are satisfied with it. There yes. are very few people that think my prayer life is really, really good. Whether, again, whether it's a Christian or a Buddhist or a Muslim or whatever, uh, I, I'm not sure anybody feels like they have mastered the art of prayer. I, I just don't think so. Well, if they did, then they're probably needing to be humbled a little bit, yeah. actually. I'm so proud of my prayer life. <laughs> yes. I'm great at prayer. Let me tell you about it. For $10, I will tell you about my prayer life. <laughs> I've written a book about it. Um, okay, so what makes Christian prayer different than all the others? That's a great question. The reason Christian prayer is unique is because it's personal. And here's what I mean by that. Um, Jesus was a Jewish man. His disciples were Jewish. So they, they knew how to pray. And the Jewish prayer, um, historically, was um, a bit ritualistic. But they knew how to pray. Uh, Jesus introduced something to them. He, he, um, uh, he would pray in such a way, so personally to his father, that the disciples one time took him aside and say, teach us how to pray. Oh, interesting. Well, those Jewish disciples should have been taught how to pray by the rabbis, by their parents, mm -hmm. whomever. And yet there was something about the way Jesus prayed. It was so personal. So I think that is that is primarily the most unique part of Christian prayer, that it's personal. Um, I don't know if you, if you know many Muslims. Uh, I have a few friends, a physician friend of mine um, in the Akron area is Muslim. And the, the Muslim prayer is very reverent. Mm-hmm. But it's not very intimate. Um, as Christians, we get to pray, Abba, Father. Mm -hmm. There's that intimacy that, of calling God Abba or Dad. Mm -hmm. The Muslim is very, very reverent. Uh, my sister was a Buddhist. Um, and I watched, I mean, in some ways, she, her prayer life, her meditation life, put mine to shame. She was so regimented. And uh, so, but in some ways, it was very um, rote and very ritualistic. Okay. Um, very meditative. Sounds like a cold god, whatever they're talking. Yeah, the Hindus in some way. You know, I go to India a lot, and the Hindu prayer is, is similar. It's it's somewhat meditative, but it's very ritualistic, um, but it's not very relational. Mm. Um, so I think that's what makes the Christian prayer unique, is that we c claim that God is our Father. I mean, that's that's the prayer Jesus taught the disciples, and the Christian church has been doing it for 2,000 years. Our Father mm -hmm. who art in heaven. Mm -hmm. I think that's what makes it unique. Um, okay. This is kind of a stickler for me. I heard somebody once say that when I pray, um, what's the purpose of it deep down? And that's to, you're, you're praying to help you. And it's it made me feel like well then why pray at all what's what's the reason I'm just kind of I might as well be talking to myself and 
does, I guess the bottom line is, does prayer work? I guess it depends how you define work. Uh, when you say, does it work? Uh, I, I think for, for the longest time, I viewed prayer as um, transactional. If I, if I say the right words and God has enough things in his hand, he will give me those things. So it's a transaction. I, I say the magic words and God gives me what I need. Okay. And yet what, what we just said about the uniqueness of Christian prayer, that it's relational. Yeah. That's different than transactional. If, if your relationship, Mark is married to Amy, if your relationship to Amy is only transactional, you do this so that you'll get this, right. or she does this. Right. That's not relational. That's right. transactional. No. Um, kind of like a vending machine. We talk it, about that. It, like a put, vending put machine. Put in some coins, and you end up getting your pack of cigarettes or right. whatever it is. Uh, but but is, prayer is meant to be relational. And so think about what prayer is. Either quietly, you said at the beginning, or out loud, prayer is communication. Okay. So think about your relationship to Amy. Think about, if you're watching this, thinking about the, your relationship with your best friend or your spouse. What is what is the basis or, or what requires of a relationship? Communication. Relationship requires communication, and communication requires the spoken word. Mm-hmm. That's why we pray. That's why we say words, because c- communication is spoken. Words are all about that, and that's what relationships are built on. So I pray through words because my prayer is not transactional. It's meant to be relational. Now, the other side of that, though, it's also a partnership. All right. And by that, I mean, um, it's a partnership between me and God. When I look at the way Jesus acted, when I hear the way Jesus prayed, remember in the Lord's Prayer, Mm. thy will be done. Right. I know God's will. I know it's on God's heart. So now the partnership is... I know what God wants, and so He solicits you to pray for those things. I mean, think of what does God want in the world today? Peace. Peace, justice, mercy, people to come to know Him. Right. And so <clears throat> we partner with that by praying and by acting. You said something I thought was rather interesting. Rather recently, you said that, why, why do we pray? And, and you said, well, because God wants to hear our voice. He wants mm-hmm. it, he just wants to hear us as we talk to him. Yes. That's wonderful. Because it's communication, because he's our father. Yeah. So let's go back to your original question. Does prayer work? Yeah. Define define it working. Well, um, healing, is that what you're talking about? That sure. Kind of healing, uh, peace, joy, uh, no loneliness. Um, okay, so let's think about that. Maybe you're, maybe somebody's watching who um, they've been praying for someone to be healed. Mm-hmm. Does prayer work? We're not going to sit here and guarantee that the person you're praying for is going to be healed. Right? Right. I mean, how many times have you prayed for healing mm-hmm. um, for people that you love yeah. and no answer was coming? Right. My daughter has had health problems for years. I, I wish it would be over. And I've and prayed you, yes. many, many times about it. But So in that sense, would you say it doesn't work? No. I, there's a strange thing that goes on. She's learning in many other ways how to be a more mature. Uh, she, you know, I, I could go into it uh, about the things that he's allowed her to have because of it or in, in spite of it. Mm-hmm. So there's, a, there's something that, that having a faith allows you to have much more than just health, so to speak. I know that sounds kind of goofy. Oh, for sure. They say that health is the number one thing that we want, and that's that's true. But there's something more to it, that there's a spirituality and there's a, a peace that comes over her from, from knowing that he's in charge. Okay, so let's go back to the idea of prayer as a partnership. And we know what God's will is. It, the ultimate goal of our Christianity, we know in the New Testament, is that we are being conformed to the image of Christ. Mm-hmm. We're becoming more Christ-like. And so as I pray for healing for someone, and, and sometimes it, the healing comes. I mean, don't, don't hear us say it never yeah, happens. Right. Sometimes it comes, but sometimes it doesn't come. But when God is accomplishing His will, 
perhaps God is using that illness, that loneliness, that difficulty for which we're praying about to accomplish that part of his will. Right. That person's becoming more mature. Right. They're becoming more like Christ. You, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so in that sense, yes, it sort of works because God's will is getting done. Yes. And it's much bigger, as it is always with God, it's much bigger than our little minds can, can grasp. As you said, there's so much more that's that's coming to fruition, so to speak, by her having health problems that, that maybe some others that will never never learn, never know. Yes. And yet you pray. Mm-hmm. And it's important to pray. I'm going back to that question because it was a good one. Does it work? Mm-hmm. In the sense, let me also say yes, because things don't happen if we don't pray. Or things do happen because we pray. God solicits our involvement yeah. in prayer. If, if, Yeah, so in that sense, yes, pray. Because prayer is one of the means, it's not the effective cause, but it's one of the means that God uses to accomplish the things that he's doing. Yeah, and there's an intimacy there. that If, if we didn't pray, we wouldn't feel intimate to him. We, we, we wouldn't have... Uh, any relationship, so to speak. That's right. Just being able to talk with him, to him, it's it's just an amazing feeling that if you're if you're doing it and you're doing it with your heart, something comes across, something is accomplished that doesn't come from any other part of life. That's absolutely true. Yeah. Now I've known you for many years. Mark and I have been friends since. What do we think? 87, 80, uh, no, no, 90, 97, ninety-seven. No, ninety-seven. Ninety-seven. I think something like that. And uh, again, I'm, uh, I mean this with all sincerity. Mark is one of the most faithful prayers I know. Mm. Um, and I really appreciate that about you. Um, tell those that are watching and listening, what's your prayer routine? I'm not the template here, I'll tell you that. But um, let me just say real quickly, having a, again to do with my daughter and not to dwell on her, but there was a time in which I realized that God was in charge no matter what happened. And for the first time in many years, I began to pray about how great he was. Everything that I could think of, from the beauty of the birds to the mastery of the music that I might hear, those things like that. And for some reason that set my frame of mind higher so that I could could look at him as he is. He's God, he's beautiful, he's powerful, he's loving. And so that any other prayer requests, you know, like, could you do this for me? Or please help her with her health or whatever it is. It became, it had a different dimension to it. It wasn't out of a desperation or anger. It was out of taking a breath and saying, thank you for what you've given me. Now, blah, blah, blah. And as you said, not like a vending machine, but... Was it the blah, blah, blah tongues? <laughs> yes. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's another topic, by the way. I'm yeah. sorry. So now, what's your routine now? It's pretty much the same thing. I okay. mean, I, I sometimes I will just pray completely for uh, all the great he is. I have noticed something that's different with me lately. I'm pausing a lot between words or mm-hmm. sentences. And it, it kind of goes back to be still and know I am God. That's good. Because it's... If there's just a silence there, it allows what you just even said to sink into yourself Mm -hmm. as well as let him hear it. And it kind of gives me a chance to move on with it. So pace is something that's become kind of important to me. That's beautiful. You didn't say that, but it's sort of that a little bit as well. We haven't mentioned it yet. I guess part of prayer is listening. Oh, good point. Where you, I mean, again, don't hear me say, I heard the voice of God, yeah. and I want you to. So, no, that's not what we mean by listening. But there is that, I mean, again, to use a biblical phrase, there is that still small voice. Call it an inner impression. Call it just silence. Call it the wind. I, I don't know what it is, but there is a part to prayer yeah. of just listening for the voice of God. Yeah. And again, hear what I just said. I've never heard God's voice. If, um, and some people might. I, I don't know what to make of that. But listening is just what you said. Be still. Shh. Quiet. And know that he's God. Yeah. Mark and I go on silent retreats sometimes. Yeah. Oh, 24, 48 hours of not saying a word. If you've never done one before, 
to it. It's remarkable yeah. what it does. It, that, that's sort of like a weekend of prayer, just total yeah. prayer. Yeah. Okay, um, what Bible verses uh, are on prayer? What I mean, we know that he says Did pray you, like this and he does all the Lord's prayer. There's about um, verses that instruct prayer, but I, I counted not long ago, there are over 600 prayers really? in the Old and New Testaments. Yeah, I mean, maybe make it a life goal to study them all. I mean, there's beautiful prayers, but there are some very specific instructions um, on prayer. Yes. And some of them are kind of confusing. First Thessalonians 5. E, uh, English Standard Version, New American Standard, King James all translated the same way. Pray without ceasing. Yes. <laughs> you know, that's pretty wonderful, though. I, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but i got to tell you, I think that is, if you can grasp it, which is very rare for me, I'm not saying it's always on my mind, but when I, yeah, I can sit there, I can talk with him for two seconds and say, thank you, or... Uh, could you help that person, or you know this or that, and so, and there's a kind of this feeling where it's a constant communication. Yes. So pray without ceasing. Let's figure out what that means. I don't think it means twenty four seven, always praying, and never talking to your wife or at work. Or, yeah. um, <laughs> Not much would get accomplished. Um, it could mean what you just said, and that's sort of having uh, on the ready prayer. Okay. Um, and I like that. It could also mean, and this could apply to some of you maybe that are watching, pray without ceasing, reverse it. Don't, cease without praying? No, don't cease praying. Don't quit. Okay. Don't quit. I mean, based on some of the things we said before, maybe you've had a prayer request that you've been praying for a long time, yeah, yeah. and it hasn't been answered. Right. And the temptation is quit. So pray without ceasing. Don't quit praying. Don't keep going. Um, yeah, I, I like that. I, I think it's Paul's admonition to those of us that have been discouraged in our prayers. Don't quit. Pray without ceasing. Keep praying. Whether you're, whether there's a, a floodgate of answers or total silence back from God, don't quit. Pray without ceasing. What do we say in Jesus' name at the end of a prayer? It's the code word. Yeah, no. it's, it's tradition. It's, yeah. Okay, that's a, biblically a person's name is their character, by the way. Oh, really? Um, so there's a couple of things going on. Um, Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name, and then he goes on to say, my father will hear you and things like that. So a couple of things going on there. Um, I don't think it means that at the end of every prayer, you have to tag on, and in Jesus' name, mm -hmm. amen. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's not heard. First of all, if, if the name is character, then this prayer request has to, in a sense, link up with Jesus' character. Okay. So if you're praying for something that is completely out of his character, oh, I'm going to get gross just for a second. Okay. Um, this is a fresh take. Uh, um, a Christian world leader who recently fell morally, um, being with women he shouldn't have been, and as they were feeling guilty being with him, he would make them pray and thank God for this opportunity to be with this guy. Oh, my gosh. See, that's not praying in Jesus' name. That is totally contrary to the character of Christ. So even if you tag in Jesus' name at the end of that prayer, that's not in Jesus' yeah. name. Okay. The other side of that, too, though, um, Mark used to work at WKSU. He was a... He was a big time oh, yeah. um, no, voice no. of the. Oh yeah, big celebrity, We're, you know, signing autographs all the time, <laughs> celebrity endorsements. Yeah. And yeah, he, he was pretty important there. So if I would walk into the WKSU studio, I couldn't just walk through the back doors where all of the studios were and everything else, and they wouldn't let me in. But if I used your name, they still wouldn't let you. No, in. <laughs> they did. That's the, that's my point. They would. If I said I am a friend of Mark Pennell's. Boom, the doors opened and I came in. And in many ways, um, that's the beauty of Christian prayer. When you are praying in the name of Jesus, you are telling God himself, ah. um, I'm with him. Oh, and now you have access. It, it, it sort of is like an access card. You know, uh, in the New Testament, it says there is one mediator between God and man, 
the man Christ Jesus. So sin is a big chasm between us humans and God. And so because of that, um, communication is interrupted somewhat. Jesus is the mediator between God and man. So there's now a go-between. And so in many ways, Christ is my go-between. And so when I come in Jesus' name, it's like coming in your name into the WKSU studios. I'm coming in Jesus' name to the throne room of God, and he listens to me. It's pretty good. Wow, pretty wonderful. I guess this is uh, a a taste of what you're going to get with a fresh take, and I hope that you've enjoyed it. Learn from it more than anything. He's he's the man who knows. I'm the curious one. And I don't know. I mean, in, in some ways, what you heard as well. I've studied some, and I'll give you some of my experience. But Mark is a is a Christ follower himself. Um, again, we talked about your prayer life, and we really are two friends that like to talk about life and spiritual things, and even things like prayer um, to help. And I hope this has been helpful. Um, prayer is really important. And I'll confess, I'm not that good at it. I, it's sort of going ways. Anyway. I would go on that one for a long time. Anyway, thank you very much for being with us. See you next time.